Hi, welcome back to Petsy. My name is Pamela Byrne. My next guest is Alan Weiner, and Wy Alan is the Flyball Director of the Hot Dog Club Flyball Team, and is also Regional Director for the North American Flyball Association. So, Alan, when and where did Flyball get started? Flyball started in the early 1970s in California. It was originally an offshoot of a, uh, another event called Sand Hurdles. There were demonstrations on the Johnny Carson show and the David Letterman show that really helped it to grow in popularity. And in 1985, 12 teams formed the North American Flyball Association to standardize the rules of racing and uh, to be able to run f uh, tournaments in different areas. And uh, it's grown tremendously since then. There are currently now about 200 teams uh, participating. Gosh, it's 200. grown tremendously. Yeah, that's incredible. I didn't realize. I know the the Astro Cluster has a big flyball. That's our biggest annual tournament. Is the uh, Astro World Series of Dog Shows flyball tournament, yeah. and this year it'll be a three-day event, which really? we're really looking three forward days. to. Gosh. And we already have uh, about 20 teams entered, and we're expecting uh, the best best tournament ever. Really? Okay, we have a little bit of tape here that we're going to be showing you of uh, what flyball is all about, and Alan's going to be talking a little bit over the tape while while it's on, so please stay tuned and watch the tape. <clears throat> this is video that was shot at last year's Astro World Flyball Tournament, and um, it's basically a relay race between competing teams. They have like two, is there like two, two sets? There are two uh, yeah. sets of lanes, and uh, they run adjacent lanes. The dogs go over four hurdles. Uh, they hit the pedal on the flyball box, return over the four jumps, and the next dog goes until all four have completed the uh, the run. There are three heats per race, and there could be, uh, gosh, sometimes uh, 15, 20 races gosh. in a tournament. So how many dogs are on a team? There are four dogs running at a time. There are two alternates, and since the tournaments are so long, you have to rotate the dogs in and uh, use them judiciously so they can last the whole tournament and run your fastest lineups when you need to. I know this is different breeds running. Is, is there any particular type or breed of dog, or can any dogs? That's one of the great things about fly ball is any dog can participate in this. It's not only for purebred dogs, but it's also for uh, mixed breed dogs as well. Uh, the Border Collies really dominate the sport. They are by far the fastest, but we have some Belgian Ferns that are fantastic, and uh, we have uh, Rottweilers, uh, Labrador Retrievers, uh, Dobermans do it. Uh, so, and some wonderful mixed breeds as well. Yeah, that, that Border Collie was really fast going through there. <laughs> and that's a mixed breed. Yeah. That's a, a cattle dog mixed breed. That's one of the fastest in the Welsh Terrier in the back lane, Australian Cattle Dog. Uh, so we have a representation just about every breed there is. Oh, really? Right now, I believe there is 83 breeds participating in fly ball. Is there really? Gosh. Is there size? Do they, do they do it in size-wise? Do you have larger dogs, medium dogs, and small dogs? There's an advantage. You may notice, uh, I can't see it too well in this race, but the team in the, clear, in the, far, in the near lane is jumping 16 inches. Mm -hmm. Another jump, uh, team may jump eight inches. What they do is they take the shortest dog on the team and they set the jump heights four inches lower than the, the height of the dog oh, at the withers. So there's a definite advantage of having some short dogs on the team because it could help your other dogs go over lower jumps. Mm -hmm. That's all part of the strategy involved. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got some more here. They really, they they really seem to love it. Yeah, and you notice they're going over four 10-foot broad jumps in a row, mm -hmm. and uh, the dogs have to be quite athletic to do this, especially all day long. In a tournament, we could run 30 to 40 times a day. That translates to over 300 jumps, mm -hmm. so these dogs are tremendous athletes. And they don't seem to bother the other dogs. They don't seem to, you know, get involved in any altercations. Or That's anything. all part of the training. There's so much going on. The dogs really have to learn their job and, and to stay focused on it, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And it takes a lot of training to do that, but yeah. uh, it's a great reward. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. It really looks like, like I say, the dogs look like they're really having a blast. They do. But most of the people participate in fly ball also do things like uh, dog obedience and tracking agility, but the dogs seem to love fly ball mm -hmm. above all else. It's a real go for broke type sport. And one of the most fun things about fly ball, it's a team sport, and there aren't many activities in the dog world that's a team sport. It's usually an individual effort. I see. And uh, yeah. it's fun to work in a group of people. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Does a dog need to be obedience trained to uh, do this? 
Obedience training helps a lot. Uh, dogs that are obedience trained learn much quicker because a lot of the exercises that we're doing have uh, components in common with dog obedience, such as coming when called, uh, retrieving, the broad jump. But uh, it's not necessary to have obedience training. It just speeds up the training process if you, if you do. I mean, do they have a training. natural, do some dogs take this more naturally than other dogs? Um, not really. It's just a matter of the training that's been in it earlier. Um, Certain dogs like the Border Collies are extremely intelligent. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the herding breeds do very well. And uh, the uh, obedience trained dogs do tend to learn faster. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, must a dog not already know how to retrieve in order to be able to do this? If a dog knows how to retrieve, it makes the learning process much quicker because that's one of the main components is getting the dog to retrieve the tennis ball. But it's not necessary. If you could train a dog how to retrieve as a separate exercise completely mm -hmm. and then incorporate it into fly ball. So it's not necessary, but it does speed the training up. A Doberman, look at that Doberman. Yeah, they take it's incredible slow, strides. Yeah, look at that. It's wonderful. Yeah. And this is a tournament from a few years ago. And you'll notice when they get to the box, the older style of box, mm -hmm. the equipment evolves quite a bit. Is and, this your uh, dog here? Yes, that's, that's uh, your dog. That's my dog, Ruth, mm -hmm. old Rottweiler. Yes. Some goldens. Uh -huh. There's a lot of golden retrievers that participate. Yeah. And uh, some mixed breeds. And the dogs really enjoy it. Yeah. You can see the older style box. So teams get very, very competitive, uh, particularly up north where the sport is the most popular. It's, um, it's very I know last year when I, I went to pick somebody up at the airport um, right around the, the Astro Cluster and there was a, there was a team of flyball people coming in mm -hmm. and they, they all had their dogs. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. Well, last year we had teams from uh, Minnesota and California, a team in Dallas, really? as well as a lot of local teams, and we're expecting a big turnout this year. Uh, amazing, the sport's yeah. real big up north. That's where they just had a tournament in Toronto recently at the Sky Dome mm -hmm. where 107 teams participated. Wow. So it's, uh, you can see What's it's this, this here? Look at this dog. This is a demonstration that a team in California <laughs> did for the Sacramento Kings basketball game. This mm -hmm. is the Arco Arena. So we try to do demonstrations as often as, we po as possible mm -hmm. to expose people to fly ball and let them know it's available. Yeah, huh. Look at this. And the dogs can do it. They're so well trained, they could do it in most any environment. Everybody says that when they see the border collies. <laughs> <laughs> they really excel. Okay. We have a phone call, so let's see what the viewer has to say. Hello, viewer. You're on the air. Thank you. Hi. I'm very interested in fly ball, and I've been sort of peripherally watching the sport at Astro Hall and other places for a couple of years. And I notice they keep changing the design of the box that launches the ball. It's not really fly ball anymore, is it? The ball doesn't fly up like it used to several years ago. That's true. The, the design of the equipment has uh, really evolved. As I mentioned, the teams have gotten very competitive. So they look at any way they can mm -hmm. to shave time off. Most of the time you're going to gain is by practicing the exchanges where the dogs pass nose mm -hmm. to nose at the line. But they've also looked at technology and tried to find better ways to build the boxes. Uh, there is a very strict set of rules governing how the box operates, uh, how far it throws the ball. And all the boxes are built in accordance with those rules. Mm -hmm. The larger boxes you see now have shaved off a lot of time, so people are always looking for ways to improve those. They've gone to piston-driven designs rather than spring-loaded and uh, different cushioning methods. And um, Gosh, it's all part it of the sounds fun. very so high-tech. <laughs> and uh, a lot of the tournaments have electronic starting lights mm -hmm. and uh, measuring the time electronically, so it uh, has gone quite high-tech. Really? Huh. So are there many local fly ball teams? Yes, we have quite a few local teams in all areas of town. Uh, uh, there's a team up in Dallas, and uh, there's just several groups. A lot of obedience schools will have a, be uh, a fly ball team. Some dog training schools will have them. Or just some friends will get together and put a team together. Mm -hmm. um, people who train together as uh, people who do agility will also put together a fly ball team. So there's a number of places to get started, and they are all over town. Yeah, really. So are there, can a, a dog earn a title by competing in, in uh, fly ball? Absolutely. That's one of the fun things. When you compete in the tournaments, you're competing as a team for tournament placements, but you're also competing individually to earn titles. And there are six titles now that you could earn uh, depending on the level of accomplishment of your dog. Um, so there's quite a bit to achieve on a personal level as well as uh, with your team. Okay. We have another caller. Hello, viewer. You're on the air. Yes, uh how do I get in touch with the hot dog club and what kind of training do they offer to people and 
Yeah, sure did. The Hot Dog Club has been around uh, since 1965. We're primarily an obedience training club, and we have obedience classes. But the people, the members involved, are involved in such diverse areas of dog trainings. We offer fly ball classes. Uh, there's tracking classes, agility. Uh, I can give you the number for that. Uh, uh -huh. Call 694-7446, okay. and uh, that's an answering service, and we can get you all the information regarding fly ball training. We do have fly ball classes for the public starting uh, relatively soon, so oh, uh, it's okay. a good time to, to start We will be learning. giving that number out again. Oh, it's up on the screen. Okay, is it physic physically demanding for the dog to do this? Yes, it is. It's uh, As I mentioned, they could be expected to go to 30, 40 heats a day over several hundred jumps, mm -hmm. so it's imperative that the dogs are structurally sound and in top physical condition. In addition to the training we do with fly ball, we do a lot of conditioning with them mm -hmm. to make sure they can take us. That's, we want it to be fun and we want it to be safe for the dogs. So uh, they are truly great athletes and it takes a lot of conditioning to keep yeah. them in that shape I get to do the, it. I, get, I guess they get really excited when they oh, know they do. Oh, they do. Yeah. Yeah. You go to a fly ball tournament, all you hear is barking. The dogs yeah. are very excited yeah. by it. Okay. They love it. Is this an, an activity the whole family can participate in? It sure is and it makes the training so much easier if you do have your family help. Mm -hmm. It helps motivate the dog and there's a lot of times that you need a helper to hold the dog while you call it over the jumps and it makes training easier and it, it does make it more fun for the dog. Mm -hmm. So this would be a good family sport to, sure. to get yeah. you. Get and even if you don't have a real fast dog, the uh, tournaments are set up in a way that they're divided by division. So you're racing against teams that are similar in performance to your own. Okay. So it's uh, very similar to a bowling league the way it's set up where you compete mm -hmm. against uh, okay, similar we have teams. Okay, we have another caller. Hello, viewer, you're on the air. Yes, uh, my question is, uh, the man says that you can earn titles. My question is, who recognizes these titles and how are they presented? Okay, the titles are, there's a set of guidelines. Uh, the North American Flyball Association has a very uh, extensive set of rules uh, governing that. Mm -hmm. And when you race on a team that races under a certain elapsed time, you get flyball points for that. Uh, this is an international organization that's uh, also grown in relationship with the sport. And uh, there is racing going on now in the uh, United States and Canada, in England, Australia, New Zealand, and that's all under the North American Flyball Association rules. Uh, they keep track of the points earned when dogs participate in tournaments, and they award the certificates to them. It's just like the American Kennel Club, uh, mm -hmm. American Kennel Club okay. does to uh, yeah. obedience dogs. Would you like to give that number out again? Sure. The phone number is 694-7446. That's the Houston Obedience Training Dog Club, and that could be for information for obedience classes or fly ball classes. Okay. Uh, what type of equipment is required for this? It's not real equipment intensive, which is nice. It doesn't require a huge investment or a truck to haul the stuff around. All you need is a set of uh, inexpensive hurdles. The four hurdles can be made out of a couple of sheets of plywood or PVC pipes and a fly ball box. Um, typically, though, if you join a uh, fly ball group, they have all the equipment that's needed. It will just accelerate the learning process so if you, you have it to work on your own. So you just have to show up with your dog every uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, and the more you work, the faster the dogs learn. Right. And, uh, so how do you compete. teach it? dog to, to do fly ball? Well, as you saw, there are a lot of components in fly ball. So you break down into individual components and teach each thing individually. Mm -hmm. uh, teach the dog how to hit the box separately. Uh, teach them to go through the uprights and over the jumps, how to come back. So just break it down into very small increments. Once a dog has mastered each one of those increments, then you put it all together and um, introduce distractions and uh, things like that. Okay, well, thank you, Alan. We've run out of time. I'd love to go on and ask you some more questions. Thank you for having but, me. Uh, so next week we're going to be showing our guests, we're <clears> going to be talking about the Golden Retriever dog. We'll be looking at some more tapes that we took out at the cat show in January. And we'll also be talking to, to a vet about exotic pets. I would like to thank this evening's guests, Je Gary and Judy Newton. Uh, Joe Harper and Alan Weiner. And if you have any cute or funny pictures you'd like to send us for us to show on the screen, please send them to us. Our, num our address is Pet Scene 4702 Jackson, Houston, Texas 77004. I'd like to thank tonight's guests again and thank you for watching Pet Scene.